Hi guys, welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the dark arts of JavaScript and the with function. You've probably never heard of it, but I'm going to teach you it and show you some coding examples in this video. If you love free content, if you love cheat sheets and loads of other stuff, sign up on avalex.co.uk for that newsletter. Link in the description down below. Hit that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, and let's get on with the video. When using the with keyword in JavaScript, think of this as with something else. So we have the with keyword, and then we have some parentheses, and then we have some braces. So these braces represent an execution context, a lot like a function has braces, and in those braces you have a set of instructions that you're going to run and tell the JIT compiler or JavaScript to work with and execute. So this is called an execution context. Now with execution context comes scope. Certain things can be accessed inside of these braces and certain things cannot. So the with keyword, what it allows you to do is bind certain objects, certain things to this execution context and then you can access those objects directly. So for example, we can write something very basic like console.log and then we can just print out a string such as hello. So once we do that, it will just print out the string hello and that's perfectly fine. Now if I try to do log, for example, well log is scoped inside of the console object. So I had to do console, then I had to look inside that object for the log method and then run it. But if I try to run this directly, this execution context, if you if you will, this right here that's executing this little context, it does not have direct access to it. So if I do log now, it'll say, sorry, log is not defined. And if you take a look at console itself, you'll notice it is an object and it has all of these different methods and properties associated with it. So can we bind that object? Can we create a context in which I don't have to use the console dot? So with will allow us to execute an execution context with whatever you assign in these parentheses. So in this case, I'll say console and it's got to be lowercase. So I am now binding console with this execution context. Now we can do something really impressive and say log. And notice when I said log, it's not showing undefined here. It's actually telling me this is a function here. And I can say hello. And then we can hit return. Now notice it said hello, it didn't error and say what the hell is log? Well this is called an unqualified name. In other words if you try to run log on its own there is no function defined within this execution context called log and also there is no global function called log. So it goes up the scope chain and says there's absolutely nothing there. But with has bound the console object. So this execution context comes with console. And therefore what it actually does, it says this name is unqualified, meaning I can't find it just by this execution context and the window execution context alone. It's an unqualified name. Then it will start to look at the bindings on that scope or what is bound. And then it will say, ah, there's a console object that's bound here with, that comes with this execution context. And of course, it does have the log method. So the next thing we can do is you can actually uh, embed multiple things in here. So you can say with, and then you can do, I want this execution context to come with console. Okay. And then I'm going to write another with statement. And this time I'm going to provide an array and we are going to provide a, an array of a b and c so now we're not just binding let's say any old object that we normally have on the window or or you could define your own object there it's up to you we're defining our own array here an array is an object with the keys as an index 
and JavaScript manages those indexes. And then we have another execution context, which of course is at the moment going to return undefined because we've not really defined anything here. So let's define what that does. So let's do log. Now you notice again with log, it returned and said, yeah, that's a function. And then join. Let's see what is produced. So you'll notice that ABC was returned. So ABC, the string, and it was returned to the console. So we logged it out to the console and we joined the string. So we have two unqualified names here. Join is unqualified. At the moment, if I try to run join, it will just simply error saying, look, nothing actually exists with join on here. So it goes, right, well, that's an unqualified name. And so we have an execution context here bound with console. And then there's another execution context here that comes with this array and so what happens is join is going to say this is unqualified it's not available in this execution context and it's not available on the global scope either so it starts taking a look at what this execution context comes with and so immediately join is going to be executed first and what happens is it goes ah there's an array object here that array object has a prototype object and in prototype we have the join method. So if I create an array, there's the array. It's an object. It has a prototype object associated with it. And then it will go ahead and take a look at join. There it is. So it's found the qualifying key that we need. And so that's been bound with that. Then we have log. Now we go up one more because this execution context says that name is unqualified, meaning it's not going to return anything and it's going to error. So we need to take a look at other bound context. So we go up. Don't forget this context is embedded inside of this context. And so now when I look at log, it's going to go, aha, this execution context is with console console has a qualified name called log so this unqualified name will then become qualified when we go up that scoping of the chain and of course it will return console.log join this array and so that is basically what happens here and it's quite an interesting dark art but it's not recommended to use so why shouldn't you use the with function in JavaScript? After all, this with function has been in ECMAScript version 1.5. ECMAScript are the body that control how the syntax is interpreted by, by browsers and sets the standard. So it's been around for quite a while and most browsers do have this implementation. Well, first of all, it's disabled when you are in strict mode of JavaScript and that's because it wants to strictly scope certain things and use closures and memory hoisting. So in other words, this really isn't necessary. Plus it causes a lot of confusion. So we're gonna go through each one of those and why they're so complicated. But first of all, it's important to note that it's disabled in strict mode of ECMAScript. It wants to strictly scope things. Number two, there's also something else that's very important, which is you'll be ostracized by everybody who looks at your code and goes, what the hell is that? I've never even seen it in my life. And it's also not just uh, a recommendation from me not to use it. Uh, but also the Mozilla Developer Network, or M MDN. This uh, Mozilla Developer Network says, no, don't use it, it's not good. So it's not just my opinion, it's many other professionals in the field, and it's probably going to be put in the dustbin sometime soon. But it's interesting to play around with these dark arts and learn about scoping and learn about how this particular function works. So without further ado, let's take a look at a few coding examples of why this is not a good idea to use. Okay, so first of all, there are two reasons why you should not use this. The first one is performance. When you start creating things like this, number one, your code can be hard to read, so that decreases the performance of someone trying to read your code. Number two, the actual performance of execution. When you create unqualified names, it then has to start going through these scopes and searching through objects and so forth. So instead of creating a temporary variable to target something and then following it that way, 
you are actually trying to bind execution context with certain objects, those objects and their prototypes will have to be accessed and checked, each one, and then the first one that actually returns the unqualified name as a qualified name, so for example, join will qualify first on the array, but join obviously wouldn't qualify on console, so that would execute. Log, however, this is the performance decrease, is going to, first of all, have to check on that array. That's not going to happen. And then it's going to go up and say, ah, console, search for log, and then find that. So you can see how through this process and chaining, you've got a search that decreases performance. It also decreases performance because the code isn't very easily readable. Uh, because, you know, if I just look at that versus let's say I say console.log and then I have my array I'm just gonna copy that because I love being lazy and then I do dot join now if I was to write it like this would this read lexically would that make sense or more sense to me as a developer than something like this and I've had to write more code in that as well so if I do that, I'm doing exactly the same thing, but it's more lexical, it's more understandable. So that's the main thing, is performance, and you're not going to get ostracized. Uh, the second thing is accidental shadowing. So this is a great example when I want to say function get average. So I'm going to create a function like this, and this function is going to take a min and a max value. And then inside of that function, we are going to use the with function. And we're going to use the execution context with the math object. The math object is used rather a lot in JavaScript. And we want to return from this execution context the round now notice I don't need to type math.round right I don't need to do that anymore even though that would read more lexically it's gonna look that's an unqualified name in this scope and the global scopes and the scopes above it and so forth so it's gonna go that's unqualified let's take a look at what this execution context comes with and see if we can qualify it so it will qualify that then we've got round and then you know we do min plus max first and then we divide by two so we get the average between the minimum and maximum value so that's all well and good so you think that min is going to come from here don't you and you think max is going to come from here so the values we pass in so let's see if that actually works so i'm going to get undefined there so it means that it has created this function now I can do get average, and so far we've not provided it any values for min and max, so let's say 10 and 20 for max. You'll notice it's still returning nan. Nan means not a number. Why is this happening? Well, it's called accidental shadowing. You see, the math object right here has a qualified name called min and max potentially in its prototype and so forth there will be a min and max in here i'm just terrible at reading all of this stuff so let's take a look du -du 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 -du. well we'll just do math dot min math dot min math dot max so you'll see that math.min and math.max are functions. Now, here's the problem. Round's okay. That's what we wanted from the math object. We wanted the round method, but min, we didn't want. But you'll notice it's taken precedence. It sort of shadowed the min and the max. So this min and max, this min has the value 10. This max has the value 20. But this min and max isn't those two. Right, this min and max is actually unqualified names in which it tries to qualify with the math object. So what you're actually trying to do is add two functions together. It's the same as writing math.min plus math.max. And what you're going to get is either something really weird like that or what you will actually get is nan or not a number because you should be able to add 10 
plus 20, divide it by 2, and then round that number off, and it should give you a number. But at the moment, it's just giving you nan, because you're trying to add two functions together, and that just doesn't make any sense. So, that is why you don't use the with function. And so, if there's any sort of mysteriousness around this, don't. Uh, it's something you shouldn't learn. But it's also something to really fun to play around with. I really like this type of stuff because it's still fun to play around with it and seeing all these weird, quirky things with the JavaScript language. But it's definitely something you shouldn't use in production code. And if you're in use strict, this entire with function is completely disabled, quite rightly so. Alrighty. All right, guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you enjoy free content and loads more developer programs, Hit that subscribe button, ding dong that bell, sign up to that avalex.co.uk newsletter, completely free. And on top of that, I think I've got something really interesting for you. Are you ready for this? I have a six hour course, a six hour video that will teach you all the essentials of JavaScript, including closures, memory hoisting, and so forth. that deal with a lot of scoping and, and things like that. And it'll break everything down for you. Now that six hour video, is pretty long, so I also have a playlist, a JavaScript Essentials playlist, where you can pick and choose which pieces you'd like to learn in the course, and it's just a little bit more broken down. I recommend you check those out and subscribe.